So to better understand this application, let's first notice that if we apply m acting on any vector u, the vector we get is q applied to u in the top part of that um, entries of, those, of that vector, and we retain a copy of u in the bottom. This is because the matrix m was q on top and then the identity matrix on bottom. So this is true for all u in z mod 2 to the fourth. And so a copy of your original vector sits inside of this vector. So imagine you're trying to send a message u across some sort of a channel, a communication channel, and you want a receiver to obtain um, that message. And you would like it for them to obtain exactly the message you sent because if you hear something else on the other end of that line or you see something else, then you may misinterpret what the sender is trying to tell you. So there's a sender and a receiver. And so for example, um, during this transmission, there could be some noise or maybe something that alters that message. You hear this all the time when you're on the phone and sometimes the signal isn't working too well. You might not hear exactly what the other person is saying or you might hear something a little bit different. So there may be disturbance along such a line. So for example, if we were sending, um, let's say my name across this channel and at the other end of the line, the receiver sees um, the word Archer, for example. Now, what was the original message that was supposed to be sent? In this context, you have, you know, you know the English language, so you know that there may be um, a specific word that this is corresponding to. But in this example, you have two possibilities that this word could be, at least. Um, one of them could be Archer or maybe Arthur. And in order for the receiver, to verify what the message was, or one way to verify what the message is, is they could send that same message back and then basically ask, you know, is this the message you intended to send? Okay, so now imagine that this person sends, um, let's say this person sends Archer back, and imagine another error occurs. And imagine that the error occurs, um, takes place, let's say, in the first entry and it becomes Urcher. And then the person is like, wait, did you want to send me the word Urcher? Like, what are you doing with this message? Um, are you trying to tell me Escher or Archer? And so this person's gonna send another message back um, asking, and you can see that this could keep happening for a very long time. Um, so it would be very convenient to either this person can send multiple copies of that message and then with low or lower and lower probability the more messages you send the more likely it is that the person on the other end will figure out what that message is supposed to say. So that's one option um, but this option seems to take up a lot of resources right sending a message over and over and over again is sort of multiplying the number of resources you need by the number of times you send that message. It would be very convenient if you could somehow have a scheme where the sender is sending a message and the receiver can apply a certain method that both the receiver and sender have agreed upon in advance to possibly identify if, if an error occurred and where an error occurred during that transmission. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to simplify the problem by not looking at the English language. We're going to look at vectors whose entries are just zeros and ones, the simplest possible language that we can come up with, or at least the simplest um, list of, the simplest alphabet we can come up with, an alphabet containing two um, symbols. So let's say we initially send the vector 0, 1, 1, 0 across this channel. Now, once this channel goes, I should have written it from right to left as I've been doing so, but let's go um, counter to this. Now, if one error occurs, suppose one error occurred, that means that error is going to occur in one of these four entries. And if it occurs in the first entry, 
the only possible thing that that zero could become, because our language only has two symbols, is one. So one possibility is that we get one, 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 zero at the other end of the line. Another possibility is if the error occurs in the second entry, in which case we would have zero, zero, one, zero, and so on. So in the third entry, zero, one, zero, zero, and in the last entry, zero, one, one, one. So these are the possible outcomes if we have exactly one error. Of course, if no error occurs, then the receiver will see the original message. But how do they even know that an error didn't occur or not? So the way that we're going to solve this problem is by using the previous situation that we had developed. We can take our original message, encode it in some larger message, and then this message is going to be contained in the subspace C. So if we send a message U, it's going to be contained in that subspace C. And if we send that message across the channel instead, what could happen to it? So initially, the sender is sending the, the letter, the message U is contained in the bottom part, but now MU is contained in Z mod 2 to the seventh power. So it seems like a more complicated vector, but the only real messages that could have been sent, the ones that have no errors, are exactly in that subspace C. Any other vector in this vector space is not um, a message that the sender could have sent, because they're only working with images, um, the image of the transformation associated to M. So this message is going through. Now imagine that an error occurs somewhere along the way, error. And the message becomes, MU plus, now there are seven entries in the vector MU, so there are now seven possible errors that could occur. And these errors are exactly quantified by adding the unit vector in the ith row or entry of that vector. So this error occurs. But the reader on the other end is going to see this vector V. They don't know that it is a priori this sort of combination. All they see is some vector of zeros and ones. But they can use h to identify what form the vector v is in. Remember we said that if h of v equals 0, then this implies that the vector v is in the subspace c, which is the image of m. And if h of v equals a non-zero vector, then that non-zero vector is one of the columns of H. This tells us that V is in CI. But remember what CI was, it was this subspace plus the unit vector EI. So it tells us that if a receiver receives, receives the vector V and they apply H to it, they can identify which of these subsets it's in. And if the vector that they see after they apply h is 0, that tells us that no error occurred. So we're going to assume at most, at most one error occurs during the transmission. And if we make that assumption, then these two applications, an application of h to v, will tell us where an error occurred. And if we've identified where the error occurs, right, this says that if we see that the um, h of v is h e i, then we know that the vectors of this form, and how do we fix it? So if, if it's, let's say, this is case 1 and this is case 2, in case 1, how would the receiver identify what the original message is? they would look at the last four entries of the vector v because that's where u is and we know that no error occurred. So the original message sent by the sender is the vector corresponding to the last four entries. Of the vector v. And in the second case, what happens then? Well, if in the second case we found that 
h of v equals h of v i, then an error occurred in the ith entry of v. And how would we fix that? Well, we would just subtract ei, but subtracting and addition are the same in z mod 2. So to fix, we know that the original message will be v plus ei. Well, not the original message, but what the receiver sent after applying the transformation m. And when they do this, then they can read off the last four entries of this vector, the last meaning the bottom four, of this vector, v plus ei, is the original message. So let's just do this in an example just to see how exactly this works. So imagine you're the receiver and you see the vector v equals 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. If you apply h to this vector, so I'll write h to remind you, because otherwise, how are we going to do this computation, huh? So this is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And then we apply the vector v here. And if we apply matrix operations here, we will get the vector 3, 2, 3. But 3 is 1 in z mod 2, and 2 is 0, so this becomes 1, 0, 1. So we take this vector and look where it appears in this matrix. And in this case, it is the sixth column of H. This means that an error occurred in the sixth entry of this vector here. So error in sixth entry of V. And therefore, the, if we alter the sixth entry, that would mean we change this one, the second last one, to a zero. So that means the original message, message is one, zero, zero, one. Because we take the last four entries of this vector and then we switch the sixth entry. If we had found that the second entry was um, an error occurred in the second entry, we would have changed that 0 to a 1 and left the original message here and that would have been our the message that was sent by the sender. So um, that's the basic idea of how this works and again we worked with a case where we were dealing with um, sending messages of length 4 and we used um, a, an additional a larger vector space to encode the possibilities of computing those errors and you could also do it by um, using the, um, by having H to be a matrix consisting of all the non-zero vectors in Z mod 2 to the K. It will allow us to encode a message of length given by the number of columns in that matrix Q. And we already calculated that the number of columns in that matrix Q is 2 to the K minus 1 because of the zero vector, minus an additional k from the k vectors we used on the left-hand side of the matrix H. So we can encode quite a large um, number of uh, messages under the assumption that at most one error occurs during transmission.